So, so the game that you're world champion at is only your second best game. Is that what you're saying? I think so. Yeah, because like <laughs> 13, 14 hours a day. I mean, Whoa. not driving all the time, but just being there. And, and I knew from preparing for race weekends that I was always really good on uh, on the simulator compared to other drivers. All right, uh, I'll give this uh, esports thing a shot. All right, everyone, welcome back to the cooldown. Now, I'm actually Tomo in the future from when this was actually recorded because I had an issue with, uh, I got a new laptop, transferred data over, ended up wiping my old laptop before it had all transferred over. So I've lost all the video footage of me in this interview. So this is all you're gonna see of me. Fortunately though, my guest was able to not only record themselves, but record my audio within theirs, which usually would, wouldn't be a good thing, but, but is a good thing in this regard. So take it away, Yarno. Or should I say introducing me, introducing Yano in the past. And also my audio is not that great on here. So again, apologies, but it was a very, very good chat. Hope you enjoyed it. We've got a multiple Dutch national karting champion, multiple race winner in Formula 4. And he's, he's also won this thing called F1 Esports. He's world champion in it. You might have heard of it. OP by name, I like to say, an OP by nature. It's Yano up me, Yano. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, thanks for uh, having me on your uh, podcast. Um, quite excited. Uh, I saw the one with uh, with JD, Tiro Limitless. Yeah. Um, which was uploaded, I think, two weeks, three weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago at all, no. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me, and uh, I'm excited to be here. Absolute pleasure, mate. Um, yeah, no, we, we, we talked about you a little bit, because, of course, you're the, the man of the hour at the moment, having... Uh, crowned your victory in f1 esports that was i mean i've i've followed it i followed it a little bit last season but i followed it really closely um kind of this last year and congratulations man like thoroughly well deserved mate yeah thank you um i wasn't quite happy yet completely with the whole season i mean there were some things i could have done better um mainly the races is the place where i did really well which is where the points yeah. are about it of course um but yeah qualifying could have been better a few times so yeah. uh yeah thank you but I think it's, well, it's, it's that mentality, right? That ch chase of perfection all the time that's got you to where you are, right? I would say. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people are aiming for perfection just in qualifying because that's well, mm. where the raw pace is. Mm. Um, but I think uh, I showed in the past two years, actually, um, that the race pace is, which, which is probably the most important, um, of course, to get points. Absolutely, um, man. So, yeah, uh, I think... Uh, I, I was pretty good at uh, especially calling the right strategies, uh, calling when to pit at the right time is something uh, I pretty much nailed this year. I was going to say you're the king, the king of the reverse strategy, doing the opposite to everyone else and just flying through the field. Um, but we will get onto that much more later on. Don't you worry. But what I want to talk about first, because the thing is, Jana, you're not just an F1 esports driver. You're not just a sim racer. You do have quite the pedigree when it comes to Real racing. So I, I want to wind the clock all the way back. I want to go back to just put yourself in the mind of you when you were a very, very young lad, when you first started in karting. How old were you when you first started? Uh, I was four and a half years old when uh, I got wow. put in a go-kart for the first time. It took, like I think, two and a half years before I started doing races. Nice. Um, because, well, if you're four and a half, you... I uh, can barely walk around, but, uh, <laughs> especially with such a big helmet on. <laughs> um, That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, you That's can imagine point. like such a small body and then such a big uh, <laughs> helmet uh, walking around. Uh, it's like your head is going to fall off any moment. My grandfather and my uncle and my dad all did go-karting. Um, oh, wow. My uncle was the one with it like international level. We also raced against like uh, Jarno Trulli and Giancarlo Fisicella. Oh, amazing. So, uh, he uh so cool yeah he did uh, quite some international racing my dad did some uh, national karting championships so um yeah and then also my dad became a mechanic for a very successful karting driver uh, i don't nice. know if you've ever heard of him but his name is bas lammers which is like qu quite quite yeah, famous in dutch karting um, yeah, yeah he's like european and world champion uh a few times so yeah, he did That's that for amazing. a few years, and then, um, well, he became a mechanic for me at the age of mm -hmm. four. Uh, and we basically, he basically wasn't until I was fifteen, and then I moved on to Formula Four. 
So basically, Yada, you didn't really have a choice, did you? <laughs> uh, no, I just got put out of the, uh, the card at the age of four. And uh, yeah, it became uh, from a hobby more to like a sport. <laughs> For sure, man. So I, I've got to ask, like, do you ever wonder if that hadn't have been the case, what you would be doing now? Like if you hadn't have got into motorsport that early on, do you think you would have still fi- found it eventually? Or do you think you'd be doing something completely different? Uh, it's hard to tell because, um, yeah, at the moment I don't really have any hobbies apart from driving, uh, mm. making content. Uh, I used to go to the gym pretty much almost every day because that's what I like to do. But the, I was going to say, mate, I've seen some of your reps, lad. Fuck, uh, Jesus the, Christ, mate, you can lift. They are they're closed <laughs> now, so that's tough. I haven't been to the gym yeah. like one and a half months. Yeah, that's month. the problem. Um, but yeah, I think uh, maybe something like football, uh, because well, it's quite mm-hmm. easy. You just go out on the street and play football. Um, I did nice. that quite a lot when I was young, uh, but lately I haven't really been doing it at all because, like, if yeah, I want to play with yeah. friends, they're all way better because they they've been playing for, like, <laughs> way too long. So, what was your uh, what was your football team growing up? What I was fan of, or yeah, yeah, who who are you fan of? Um, I would say fine art because that's like the local um nice. i live close to rotterdam so yeah, that's why cool um and yeah i was always quite quite a big fan of cristiano ronaldo so of course of course Wherever did you went. uh <laughs> would would you like what kind of position would you play were you kind of more attacking defending no i'll probably attacking because of course i like to score goals uh, of course <laughs> you started cutting very early on what about in terms of your um gaming side of things so were you into racing games a lot as a kid um and what's your kind of first memory of that side of things yeah i remember um we had a playstation one but Mm -hmm. this is like a very vague memory because i was like so young and it was like there was an f1 game i I can't remember which one because i was too young for it which was like uh, i think f1 2001 or something like that um sounds about right so yeah, that was my first experience. And then uh, I got a PlayStation 3, one of the first ones. Mm. And I got like Rich Racer 7 or something on it. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and also F1 Championship Edition, which was 2006. Mm-hmm. Um, so those were the first two games I really uh, played uh, racing games on. Yeah. Nice. That, and, and did you, were you, because obviously you were doing your car in, did you focus all of your like gaming attention? Like, did you do much gaming? Um, and was it all racing games, or did you used to play like shooters as well and other stuff? Yeah, it was usually either uh, F one, Need for Speed, or Call of Duty. Nice. <laughs> what I always nice. Of course, of course. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, it's like I feel like everyone's gone through a similar kind of. Even though you know, I, I mean, I remember PS one because I am quite a bit older than you. I'm like mm-hmm. eight years older than me. You, which makes me feel very sad. <laughs> <laughs> but um but because i had a ps1 but obviously i remember it a bit more but in terms of the games yeah it was it was same for like call of duty need for speed all of that um yeah. okay so then so obviously you're carting and you're doing it obviously as a hobby and you've got this kind of support and starting early did you when you first started racing competitively so was so would you have been about seven then when you started racing yeah i think from seven years old you're allowed and i was pretty much straight away when it was allowed i, I started doing races yeah, yeah, and were you kind of? Do you remember your first like proper competitive race? I remember I finished third, but that's all I can remember about it. It's not uh, bad, not bad, not bad. Not not to the standards you're at, at the minute, but not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously it must be hard for you to say, but were you good as soon as you started? Do you know what I mean? Did you feel like you had that natural, you know, like people compare Messi and Ronaldo. So like Messi has this like God given, given gift and it feels like Ronaldo's had to kind of work for it a bit more. You know what I mean? So do you, where do you feel you kind of fitted in, in on that kind of scale? No, I never felt like I was really naturally talented um, because compared to the other people, we were basically driving two days per week, like all the yeah. time. I was just uh, karting. And it's the same with sim racing. Like, uh, I, I think a good example was David Tenitsa, who came in mm-hmm. with not super much experience in F1 Esports and won the championship in his first mm-hmm. first year. Whereas I finished fourth, even though I had already like 13 years of racing experience. So yeah. uh, I feel like, no, I'm not naturally talented at all. No. 
that you do, you do yourself a disservice there. You've definitely got some, <laughs> for sure. It's the combination, isn't it? Of, uh, of oh, actually, that's the point. So, of the F1 esports grid, how many of how many of you guys actually have real life racing experience? Because I know, like James used to do a lot of karting, but I don't know, like, what percentage of the whole grid actually has that karting experience? Do you think? Uh, I think Lucas Blakely uh, was a racing point driver last year. Has a little mm-hmm. bit of karting experience. Uh, James Baldwin, of course, has a little bit of karting experience. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there's anyone who really went past uh, the start of go-karts, uh, yeah. that kind of experience. I think no one really came as far as I did uh, in terms yeah, of the yeah. F1 Esports grid. Um, For sure. I think uh, Sally Salton has yeah. a little bit of karting experience. But um, yeah, never really got past like the uh the karting stages i think yeah it's interesting so it's kind of it helps for sure like i I think it definitely helps because you've got someone like i remember when i had james on here one of my the one of the first ones i did and he said he's he's only been sim racing for three years and he'd already won like world fastest gamer and it was like he he obviously took all of the knowledge he'd kind of gained in in karting like do, do you see that as a real kind of asset to you that maybe a lot of other drivers don't have that you do have such a fundamental knowledge of actual real life racing uh i think a little bit but i had to especially uh, when i just started in 2018 2019 around that time i really had to open myself up as well to uh luckily i was because otherwise i would have not won the championship this year Mm. but i had to open myself up to learn new things and also accept that some things were not going to be completely realistic or comparable to real life so yeah for sure i yeah that was tough because um yeah it's not easy when you learn or you're like two or three years in competitive single seaters you go Mm. to uh, sim racing and then you suddenly have to unlearn some things and understand like okay this might be not completely realistic I was going to say, yeah, because it's kind of like, it's more about understanding the game, isn't it? Compared to like, and, and even obviously like iRacing and, you know, like every, every different simulator and including F1 in that has completely different physics. Like of all of the games, what would you say? Would you say F1 is now the game that you think you are best at? Or do you still think you've got like a, a natural pull towards maybe iRacing or Project Cars or whatever? I feel like uh, the game I'm the best at is Assetto Corsa. Um, okay cool and then second is probably f1 because that's where i've spent the most time on um also as so so the game that you're world champion at is only your second best game is that what you're saying i <laughs> think so yeah because like i said of course nice. uh, it's like uh i think a little bit more natural i don't know yeah. um i can yeah, like yeah, yeah. literally just jump on it and be fast and nice. f1 it's the same because i have so much experience on it but not mm. as much Ah, oh, sick man, love that. I, I I like a set of course of it just because that's what I used to make my liveries. <laughs> I've, ah, never, yeah. I've never raced it at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the course is uh, really easy to make liveries and mods. It is. So it uh, is good. It's good in that that uh, aspect. In that sense, absolutely right. Um, okay, so again, back to in terms of your karting. When did you? I suppose when did you realize that? Okay, I'm really good at this. Like this is something that I really want to take seriously and make like a career one day potentially, or did you always back yourself and always think like, yeah, I, I, I can make, make kind of make a living from this. Yeah. My, I mean, already from a very, um, like low age, uh, I was like, I want to be an F1 driver. Hmm. And even when I was like 13, 14, 15 years old, when people were saying, yeah, uh, it's like, you're probably not going to make it because, only like 20 people make it in the end mm-hmm. and only there's only like one seat available per year pretty much um but still i was always like well yeah but my goal is still to reach f1 mm-hmm. and um yeah i I never really felt like i was gonna ma- I'm, I'm not sure i'm gonna make it but like sometimes you were doing really good and then yeah um you of course feel like oh yeah now i have a really good chance but then like two races later you might have a really shit result and then you're like mm. Mm, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe i'm not that good you know and i still have this uh even after mm. winning the world championship uh i would say in a less of a 
I would say less big of a feeling, but mm-hmm. still like uh, last Sunday, I like in my qualifying, I didn't really do a good result. I was like P9. Mm. And I was like, wait, that was not your strongest performance, Jarno. Yeah. Um, so yeah, even uh, after winning a world championship or n- winning so many races, you're still going to doubt yourself a little bit. Like um, you need to keep practicing a lot because otherwise you're not winning against these guys. So, I, I think I think it's that that dedication because obviously now you're world champion, you're the target for a lot of people now coming through. Like right, Otm is the 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 person that I need to kind of try and eclipse and beat. And you look at people like you know Lewis Hamilton, and he's had that continuously throughout his whole career. Right, he performed well, and then everyone kind of looks up and and he's kind of makes the new he's the new kind of like target to hit, but you're going to have that self doubt. Like at times, like you're only human at the end of the day, man. Like how, how did you find that, you know, you're in car in and you'd have a good or bad result. Like, would you, you know, what kind of knowledge would, you know, having a dad who raced and a granddad who raced as well, would, would you kind of go to them and speak to them and they'd kind of put you at ease? Like, how was that relationship growing up? Mm, I would say if I did that, my, my dad would kick my ass. Like, <laughs> 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 like eventually it stopped of course because i got older but yeah, from the yeah. age of four until 16 17 he was like mm. listen you have to do a better job <laughs> uh so yeah um which me i feel like makes sense of course um mm-hmm. because he's putting a lot of hours in as well and mm. yeah if, of course. if you're not doing good then uh well you just need to do better uh, mm. which is of course hard especially on such a high level and especially in mm-hmm. a sport like f1 where um there are literally no excuses for uh, messing up or anything. Mm. I think it's. Uh, I think you need to be really tough. In, yeah, it's it's a fine balance, isn't it? You need to kind of like fear of failure can be good in some ways because it can push you to keep away from that. But also, you need to like having someone that you respect and and you know look up to supporting you and and respecting their opinion and respecting the fact that you know they're not going to be happy if you uh if you don't do well because ultimately it's it's i don't know i just find that a really interesting subject the whole kind of what is the best way of nurturing young talent between the whole like being super harsh versus kind of super kind of soft and um again arm around shoulder and supportive it's it, it's impossible to know which way is the right way i suppose in that like you say everyone's different yeah yeah of course um but yeah i think especially in sports um i feel like in, especially in the last few years is that like uh children get like uh are growing up finished that they say like finishing ninth they get like a, a small i don't know how to call it not a trophy but uh participation trophy yeah exactly and yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that's not a very good thing because eventually like life is going to be a lot tougher when they get 16 17 18 19 20 years old or even past that um so yeah i feel like uh there definitely needs to be like some uh a little bit of more harsh especially when it comes down to sports yeah i understand why people do that because they want like no one wants to make anyone feel bad but at the same time it, it's like it's like for example if you spoil your kids rotten all the time and give them everything they ever want they'll probably turn into a bit of a brat you know yeah. what i mean like they pro- whereas actually like it, it's better for them to you know know the struggle and know how to like work for things to uh to achieve but i, I just find it interesting man because like ultimately you are someone who is at the very top of your game and you know the resource around you and and you and yourself you want to get the best out of yourself kind of every race weekend when you're racing whether it's in real life or on the sim like what what are the what are the big lessons and the things that you really you know use all the time i learned my tricks through the years of course um and for preparation wise i especially in 2019 i was practicing a lot because i felt like doing more is better I found out it wasn't because that's not how how a human being works. Um, So, yeah, uh, I felt like I turned down the practice a little bit uh, for last year, especially. It's hard to really balance it out perfectly as every day is different and every track is different. Um, So that's that's quite hard. But uh, I felt like last year I was practicing between three and six hours. Um, mm. which felt really good to me. But in 2019, sometimes, uh, both me and Cedric uh, Tomei was a Haas driver mm. last year. 
uh, where sometimes at a factory for like 13, 14 hours a day. I mean, Whoa. not driving all the time, but just being there. And we lived in pretty much the middle of nowhere. So the only thing we were busy with was uh, F1, F1, F1. Yeah, yeah. And like eventually like are digging a hole for yourself um, mm. when it comes down to driving, but also creating a setup or creating a setup in a different perspective. Like you don't really see um, the right way or doing things in the right way anymore. So yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like that was a big improvement for me for 2020. Mm. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Like it, you're right. It, it must be difficult because you obviously know you need to be on top of your game um, because you know, you're competing at the highest level and you've got all these new drivers coming in all the time as well. And it's like, it, it must, you're right. It, it must feel like trying to identify what tricks that you can exploit to, to keep yourself perform. I, I was, I was listening to, I mentioned it with uh, JD, actually, it was a podcast I was listening to about sleep and it was talking about how, like, if you get a, uh, this, so if you've done something, if you've trained on something during the day and you get a good night's sleep, the, the same brain waves fire in your head and it's like you're training it's like it's like you train again while you're sleeping but if you don't get a good night's sleep then if you, even if you've trained more beforehand it's like when you come back to something the day after and you tend to be better at it it's because you've kind of subconsciously trained it in your sleep um which i find really interesting so yeah yeah, yeah. Get a good night's sleep, Yano. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, but that's quite that's quite hard as well in esports because if you're hmm. watching a screen for like six hours a day, yeah, then that sure, doesn't man. help with your sleep at all. And something as well is that where an F1 esports driver uh, as, as your job, um, then you don't really have to get up early in the morning. So then that messes your sleep no. for the night after again as well. Yeah. So that that's tough because uh, I know like some drivers that like go to bed at like four because they can't sleep. Wow. Uh, which is terrible, of course. That's not good. Um, you got to be self-disciplined, I suppose, haven't you? Um, and I guess now you're racing with Mercedes. You've got you. Have you got like? <laughs> I could just sorry. I could just imagine Toto Wolf calling you up at like eight a.m. every morning. <laughs> just yo no, <laughs> get up. <laughs> No, uh, to be honest, I was like very uh, good with my sleeping schedule mm. until Christmas and New Year, because I was yeah, like yeah. I-, I carried it from the F1 esports weeks from event mm-hmm. three and four until like Christmas, where I was waking up mm-hmm. like every day at eight, uh, yeah, or half past seven, and then New Year and Christmas came along and it completely messed it up. <laughs> like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. went to start going to bed at like two and waking up at like ten or eleven. Um, mm. so that's that's tough tough to get back into it when you like don't really have to um get up i mean yeah of course man i can make Definitely. a i can make a youtube video at like 12 at night because yeah no one knows <laughs> so that's true uh, yeah, so, yeah yeah that's so true it doesn't matter when you film it um actually yeah because so how, how was your how was your christmas and new year because of course you'd just finished up the what was quite an intense season as much as you know you know, Freddie was keeping you honest right up to the last race. Yeah. Um, so it must've been quite intense. Like, was it when you finished that season, like, how was that for you? Like, did you, was it just nice to kind of be able to chill for a little bit? Uh, I didn't really, because uh, I was straight away like, oh. okay, now is the right time to push on YouTube and, and Twitch and all my True. socials. And True. also True. I wanted to, um, do as much interviews as possible to um, help with the social side of things again as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was pretty much straight away pushing again to uh, mm. to push on those uh, sides. And well, as I've been doing YouTube for consistently for, I would say, last three months now, mm-hmm. uh, I'm still quite new to it, so I'm still learning like some things. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting quicker at it. And uh, Nice. So... No rest for the wicked. Um, it's, no. it's got its own learning curve, you, yeah. YouTube as well. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I was going to talk about that later, but we might as well talk about it now as well. Like, Obviously, you've started your own YouTube channel. That will be in the top line of the description for everyone to check out. Um, how was, th- was that something you kind of, is that something you've always had ambition to, to do, to kind of be in front of camera and create content? Or is it just something you kind of 
fell into because of what you're doing with F1 Esports? No, I really fell into it because of F1 Esports because I mm. absolutely hated being in front of a camera before <laughs> and now I don't really care anymore. I used to be the same. And yeah. yeah, it's funny how it, t- 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 it changes with time, doesn't it? Yeah, but at the same time, it's I feel like it's a very dangerous thing because... Uh, like one, not even maybe not even one month ago, I was yeah. like hitting. If I upload the video, hitting 20k views in 24 hours. So I was like, "Whoa, that's really good. That's amazing." And now, if I don't hit 40k in 24 hours, I'm like, mm, "That was not really good." <laughs> uh, it's, it's, that's a really weird thing with YouTube. Like, it's never. Yeah. You feel like, or your brain feels like, it's never enough. It always needs to be more. So. Uh, I guess you're applying your racing driver mentality to YouTube now. I think so as well, yeah. (laughs) I I feel like it always needs to be better and better. And uh, once it doesn't, it's a top three out of ten video, then I'm like, Mm -hmm. shit, that should have been better. Even though you might have had really good videos uh, before. That's it, man. It's it's difficult. It's like just because you've put a lot of effort and time into a video does not guarantee it's going to be successful. Sometimes like something you won't expect to do well will, will fly. I mean, I did a video about Cognizant, like Aston Martin's new sponsor, which is just, is there's just a big IT company. It's not that interesting. And it's gone over 200K views. Whereas I do like a really fun video about tracks and it gets like half the views. And I'm like, what? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I had it uh, last Sunday. I uploaded my Formula E video. Hmm. And I was like, well, it's probably not going to do as good as Formula 1 because it's R Factor 2, it's Formula hmm. E. It's not as big as Formula 1. And yeah. well, my main thing is Formula 1 because I'm F1 Esports champion. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, let's upload my first Formula E video. And it got almost 100k views in 24 hours, like 30k nice. more than any others. So I was like, okay, what? the hell how did that happen um but yeah You're flying man to be yeah to be fair you've only again like, i i noticed that it was a, a few months ago wasn't it you started uploading and the, the videos are doing really well man like you should be proud of yourself mate you yeah really i think did. one of the reasons as well is because not really any other esports drivers are uploading uh, i mean marcel is a lot on uh twitch and he does like yes. uh, hot lab uh guides on on certain yep. tracks um Marcel's TikToks are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I watch them sometimes. Yeah. When he does that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, it is funny. <laughs> but yeah, I think um like last year David won or two years ago David Tonitza mm-hmm. won the championship and he was never really yep. uploading on YouTube. And before it was Brendan two years in a row and he also didn't really upload as much. Mm-hmm. So I felt right I felt like I really had to take the opportunity to yeah, start sure, um i mean i already started before i, I won the avenue sports championship but mm-hmm. i really uh went pretty much all in on the content side since i won it yeah well that's that's that kind of stuff is if you are prepared and happy to to put yourself out there i think you really should because that stuff is as valuable to a team as it's going to open up even more i mean your your ability should be enough but as we know with motorsport like just being very good at the driving isn't the only thing that is considered and having a really strong brand, which is what you're starting to build now um, already over a very short period of time. I think that's going to stand you in really kind of good stead going forward, mate. Um, Because yeah, man, like, like you say, not many other people are really doing it. And I look at drivers who, you know, you know, your Oscar Piastri's, yeah, you know, the Leclerc boys, the, the the guys on Twitch and all that. And it's like, they're all the future, you know, they, these are all the, everyone who's, you know, if you look at whoever's going to be in F1 in 20 years time, they will all be youngsters now who are consuming like F1 esports and Twitch and all that. So, you know, being part of that is, I think, really important. Um, do, do you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I would say I'm enjoying it more and more. Uh, at the start, I was a little bit struggling, of course, in in front of the camera and yeah, commentating yeah, on course. videos. I feel Definitely. like commentating on videos was the hardest because uh, yeah. I literally didn't know how to start. And <laughs> now, now it's like, even if if I make like a mistake um, with my sentence or something, because mm. like English and Dutch uh, mm. sentence buildup is like completely the opposite. Mm-hmm. So that's sometimes a little bit hard as 
especially at the start, I was like, everything has to be perfect. Um, mm. But now if I make a mistake, I just keep going and I don't care. Yeah, it's so, fine. Yeah. Because that's what, like, that, that's something about YouTube as well. It's like, it's, it's a platform that doesn't punish stuff like that because it's more kind of, it's more natural. It's more you. I think as long as you're coming, coming across. And like, I, I've noticed it in your video since you started. Um, and now you seem a lot more natural and comfortable in yourself when you're talking, which it really does come across. So yeah, you're doing really well, man. Um, yeah. It's good to yeah. see. But um, okay, so obviously what I do want to talk about, and, and I couldn't, I was looking before we started filming here and I couldn't find the picture, but I'm sure I remember, I believe, was it, I might be wrong here, but when Hass announced their driver lineup, you posted a picture of you and a certain Mick and Nikita on the same podium together. Am I right? It was Mick. Um, was it just was, Mick? Yeah, just Mick. It was. Yeah. Oh, it was. Damn I it. think. I think I posted two, but I don't remember. Mick was on there. Oh, were they different Max, pictures? Max Futrell was on there. Yes. Yeah, um, Max Futrell. Yeah. David Beckman, I think so. Uh, Basically, the, the the point of this is, who are the big names that you've raced against that people watching and listening at home will have heard of beyond Mick Schumacher and Max Futrell? Um, I raced a few races against Lando, um, mm -hmm. but he was, I think, one year older than me, one or two okay. years. So I was in my first year, he was in his last year. Uh, he yeah, actually yeah. won the championship, uh, European championship then, which was, I mm -hmm. think, Alcanis and Ortona. Uh, I've also raced against Nikita Mazepin. Uh, I'm probably missing out on a few. Uh, Christian Lundgaard uh, was in F2 nice. at the moment. Uh, yeah, yeah. I did two races as a teammate of him, actually, because uh, I had oh, to re cool. replace someone in um, Formula Renault. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, that was after uh, my single-seater career already, because that was in mm -hmm. 2018, so I needed those two races. Um, Wells, uh, Robert Schwarzman. Nice. Sasha Fenestras. I've actually raced a lot against uh, Robert, yeah. uh, both in karting and single seater. Mm. So, yeah, there are probably more. Who, who in, in your kind of whole kind of junior career, is there a particular driver that you think at that time, regardless of what they're like at the moment, that really kind of stood out as being, you know, one of the, the fiercest competitors that you had? Um, I would say there were different ones across like karting and junior categories. Um, okay. Yeah, in yeah. my first year of uh, junior karting, I remember David Beckman was really good. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I think he got too much pressure on him because uh, mm -hmm. everyone expected like the year after that he was going to win the World Championship and European Championship, and then he didn't. Um, yeah. He performed quite average, I would say. And then in single seater, I would say Robert Schwarzman was probably one of the best I've raced against. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would say other than that, it was always quite mixed up. So yeah, fair enough. And then and then obviously talking of single seaters, how did you what what age were you when you made that transition from karting to single seaters, and how did you find that transition? Um, because I know some drivers really excel in one and maybe don't in the other. Like, how was that for you? Um, I felt like I, I think I transitioned at the age of 15. Um, mm -hmm. And then I remember my first test was in Zandvoort. It was a two-day test, but I only did uh, nice. the last day. So I was like a day behind, which was tough. Um, yeah. And then I think it was raining as well, while Zandvoort is already Oof. hard enough in the dry. And then yeah. it's like wet so that's that feels like driving on monaco in the wet basically because yeah, it's so yeah. small no room for error mm -hmm. um and then at the end of the day um it dried up so i i went from being four seconds five seconds lap too slow in the rain uh to a drying up track on slicks and i suddenly was the fastest so mm -hmm. uh, I, I went from being really down from like being four seconds off and i also yeah, yeah, yeah. went off in the, into the gravel once um oh. To be basically happen. being uh, the fastest at the end of the day on on a drying track, and then I also won my uh, I won in my first weekend, which was in around Sochi uh, at the same time as I've nice. won. So at that time I felt like on top of the world. 
Um, yeah, man. And then That's halfway amazing. through the season, I think I was leading like 75 points. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we went to Moscow for like a double race weekend and it went all wrong <laughs> and I ended up like <laughs> losing the championship by 70 points or something. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I said before. Like sometimes you fall on top of the world and then a few races yeah. later you are, uh, um, not feeling on top of the road. Back down, back yeah. down to earth with a bang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and how, it's how you respond to that, that I guess defines your career, right? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, it was the same when I um, got dropped from Renault um, because mm. I literally had no possibility to drive anywhere because I didn't really have any major sponsors uh, backing mm. me after the 2017 season. So it's was like, mm. okay, what am I going to do now? And I knew from preparing for race weekends that I was always really good on, uh, on the simulator compared to other drivers. So okay. I was like, all right, uh, I'll give this uh, eSports thing a shot. And then I think mm. I failed the first time I tried um, trying to, to qualify. Qualif- trying to qualify for the pro draft. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, ah, oh, shit. I might not. Be good. <laughs> I might not be good enough in the end anyway. Um, but then I got a tryout for Renault the year after. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got into F1 esports. It went full circle. So you went from being dropped by Renault yeah, to exactly. being re-signed by Renault. Yeah, exactly. That was what was. Uh, I, I was going to ask about that actually. That kind of that must have been tough for you to like, to, to the fact that they kind of let you go. Like, how how did you how did you get through that yourself? That must have been like really difficult. Um, yeah, but I understood it as well as in my Formula Renault year. Uh, yeah. I was with a rookie team and we had three rookie drivers, so that was not ideal. And then I got beaten by both of my teammates, which were mm-hmm. Richard Fershaw and Neil Verhagen. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I understood it uh, quite well. So yeah, I didn't enough, I didn't struggle that much with it as I saw it coming long before because I wasn't yeah. performing well. That's good that, that that takes a lot of kind of self-awareness to be able to not react and not let that decision get to you, you know what I mean? Because I think I think a lot of people would have taken that quite badly, I guess, um and not responded well to it. Uh yeah, um but I realized as well well I was not good enough. Um, mm. I knew the team was not good enough as well at the time, mm. but uh, I was not good enough as well. So now you've you're very much in the in the world of of sim racing. Do you do you think that there is an opportunity because you're still so young, man? That's the thing. Like, do you see yourself back? Obviously, when the world has returned to a degree of normality, like back racing in single seaters or do you very much see your focus? Cause the thing is, if you do do that, you would have to take a bit of focus away from sim racing. So it's like, how do you balance the two? Like, do you really want to get back into single seaters or are you quite happy sim racing for the time being? Um, I mean, my focus is completely on sim racing at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, if the change was there, I would probably do it, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it. If it's like just one race, if I want to do it, I want mm-hmm. to do it like go hundred percent for it. Yeah, um, but at the same time, it's like uh, esports is my job at the moment, so I don't really yeah, have yeah. a choice to like leave that. Um, and also, single seat as well. The prices to try for seasons r- ridiculous, so yeah, I don't really see that as an option. I was I was going to ask about that in in terms of the the cost. I mean, look, we we all know it's expensive. Do you think there's any way that motorsport at an entry level can be made more less expensive and more kind of inclusive in terms of you don't have to be you don't have to have big financial backing to to get into it and do well do you think there's anything that can be done to try and change that um to be honest no i don't think so because um as far as i can remember uh mode sport has always been expensive mm. uh it's not like something from the past few years I would say back in the day, maybe economy was quite uh, slightly better. So mm. it was more people could get into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't really think uh, there's an easy option financial wise to get into it. Maybe yeah. sim racing, of course. I was going to say, yeah. Um, but at the, well, through the world, world fast gamer, but I was going to say like, there's such little, uh, even sim race that would have the opportunity to get into real life racing through, Mm. sim racing well yeah because I, I was chatting with um uh last week's guest mike about this and they were saying about how like you can have like 
some amazing kind of natural talent, but not have the money to get into carting or get into single seaters. Yet you can, you know, you can focus that talent on sim racing, on i racing, for example. Maybe in the future, teams would would start using, like, looking at sim races more closely, and potentially have like giving young drivers who are doing really well whether it's our, our facts or a set of course or our racing and giving them a shot, maybe, I don't know. It, 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 do you think that's a, a realistic way in now? Because surely ev- everyone going forward is going to be doing both, right? Uh, yeah, I think everyone is going to be doing both. But the tough thing is like, if you get the opportunity as a sim racer to do a one or two day test in like Formula 3, you're not going to mm. beat someone who has been doing 20 or 30 test days. It's like the chances of that happening is so small. That, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, in that aspect, it's really weird how motorsport works because you have to pay mm. to basically practice. Mm. And it's not yeah, like yeah, football yeah. where you just take your ball onto the yeah. onto the grass and just kick it uh, yeah, yeah. or do so some sprints. True. Yeah, yeah. Th- there's there's that massive like barrier to entry, um, yeah. which kind of stops so many. I mean, I used to want to be an F1 driver. Of course I did. <laughs> um, but it never happened. I'm actually, I'm from the same place as Johnny Herbert, but my parents weren't uh, in the position that they could pay for me to go karting, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there you go. There you go. I- I've made a career doing just talking about it instead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is the next best thing. So yeah, I get to definitely. live vicariously for all you guys. Yeah. Um, okay. So in terms of um, the future for Yana Watmere, obviously you said that, you know, right now sim racing is your very much your focus and all that. How do you, I guess you've you've kind of already answered this, but, and, and I always ask this question and everyone says, I don't have a plan. So I don't know why I keep this question in, but I want to keep it in anyway. <laughs> where do you, where do you kind of see yourself in the next, like, say when you're my age, when you're 28, so in what, you're 20 now, aren't you? So yeah. eight years time. Yeah. What do you think you'll still be able to, you know, be, be able to perform at the top of the sim? Cause I don't, I don't know with sim races, when is, is there a age that drivers typically kind of start to lose a bit of pace? I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, if you look at Lewis, um, <laughs> after 35, maybe, <laughs> but it's, uh, true. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say like the average retirement age at e- in esports is like 25. I think so. Yes. Really uh, young, isn't it? But I think sim racing and something like CSGO, you cannot really compare that to each other. It's just mm. not as much about reaction in F1 as I would say, I would say CSGO. Um, yeah, true. True, true, true. So yeah, what I will, where I will see myself in eight years, um, I'm quite sure it's still gonna be motorsports or F1 esports or um, anything that's related. So and YouTube as well, because your, your channel's flying, mate. If it keeps going at this rate, then in eight years' time, you'll be a couple of million, do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, a little bit much, maybe. But, um, in eight years' time. Um, if I would have like 1 million, that will be insane. Um, but if it that keeps cool, man. growing like it is now, then uh, I will hit it. I think so. Um, do you, do you think you would ever like, obviously you've already, you've gone from not being very comfortable talking to camera to now it not bothering you. Do you think you could ever see you yourself doing like when eventually you decided to hang up the gloves and, and, do you think you could ever see yourself working in like broadcasting and being one of those like drivers that's interviewed and that after that like, races and that? Do you reckon? Um, yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, because I, I think mean, you could definitely do it, man. I, I have the, um, I mean, the knowledge of like racing and motorsport and doing it myself. Exactly. But yeah. at the same time, I'm like an introvert, so I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> Best of best of both worlds, though. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. actually, yeah, in terms of like the the personalities within F1 esports, because I I feel like that's why I think it's really nice that kind of you put yourself out there. You've got like James, you've got Marcel. You know, obviously there's there's a variety of personalities. Like I've heard I've heard some I've heard some wild stories about Danny Berezne, um in, <laughs> that he's, he's like a good night out. But in terms of like the characters around, no, I'm not saying like who's your favorite, but like what what guys do you, th- do you kind of really get along with, would you say the kind of most? Um, I would say with my current teammates, Danny Moreno, because uh, we used yeah. to race each other quite a lot on PlayStation. Oh, nice. Uh, like 
two, That's three cool. years ago. Um, yeah. uh, Danny Bresny, of course, because, um, well, we just got along well. Uh, also yeah. had some nights out with him. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Marcel. That was good fun. Yeah, I, I got along quite well with Marcel. Um, hmm. Who else? Uh, Cedric Tomei and Simon uh, Weigang, as they were my previous teammates at Renault. Mm-hmm. So I get yeah. along with them quite well. I lived with Cedric, of course, for la- for like half a year. Um, so we know each other nice. quite well. And also had some nights out with Simon. <laughs> yeah. But also some fun stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Simon sounds like a good, nice, like, he sounds like a good night out. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was, what was, like, it, it's quite nice, isn't it? it? It feels like there's kind of a nice kind of family kind of spirit around it. But say, for example, you know, with, again, like with, with Danny or, um like say there's an on track you know incident i've always i've always looked at racing drivers and thought like they they clearly get along well but also when like in the heat of the moment if you have an incident you know you like words get thrown and that like is is it quite difficult managing those relationships sometimes say for example if you feel like you've been unfairly hit or whatever during a race um i think it really depends because whenever i have an incident with like uh my previous teammate Danny Bresne, mm. I felt like we really didn't really care as mm-hmm. we basically were like, oh, we just let the stewards figure it out. Or, mm. um, so yeah, it depends on the relationship, I guess, a little bit. As whenever an incident happens, you can be really respectful to each other, even yeah, yeah. if words get thrown out in the heat of the moment, mm-hmm. uh, which always happens because that's yeah, just course. how sports work. Um, I think because you all understand that you don't take it to heart maybe as much yeah but uh, then with other people i've like if we even have a small touch i'm like (laughs) i pretty much hate him straight away (laughs) Uh, so uh, and then uh yeah it depends on how they respond after afterwards yeah yeah fair enough man because look ultimately you're just you're doing what you know countless people have done for years which is just race each other online it just happens that you're racing for the official F1 teams. Like that must, that must still just be a bit mad to think about that you're a professional racing driver for a Formula One team on the F1 video game. That must still just like, you must pinch yourself sometimes. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, it does. But at the same time, I'm like, well, the people working here are just humans as well. They're just mm. really good as well um, in doing what they do. So uh yeah i think about it sometimes but uh not too much to be honest <laughs> you're you're enjoying it and that's the main thing yeah um, yeah definitely definitely but okay well let's get away from now work because we have essentially been talking about your work for a while now yeah um let's talk about f1 just as the the irl thing are you a classic super max dutchy super fan um no i'm, I'm quite <laughs> neutral um Good. I'm not really uh, a fan of any driver, so uh, I'm just really neutral. Um, you just love Mercedes now, of course. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've been winning for the past uh, oh, yeah. seven years. Yes, yeah, seven years. Uh, yep. Yes, yeah. seven years, mad. Um, mad. So yeah, they have been doing quite decent, I would say, in the past seven years. Uh so yeah it's quite it must be quite kind of aspiration like the fact that you're kind of under that brand now that you know there's no sign of mercedes slipping really is there anytime soon so it must be pretty cool um but what about so in terms of like last season like did you enjoy the racing last year did you watch all the races uh i think 2020 2020 was a really good season um yeah. i think the end of 2019 as well mm. so i think after the first half of 2019 season, F1 has been just amazing with races. Yeah, might have been like a single boring race in between. Uh, usually, it's like yeah, Sochi, Sochi or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I course. think we have had absolute bangers of racers uh, have, in the past definitely. one and a half year. So we've been definitely. lucky with that. Um, but then I think this year will be really good again as well. But I'm a bit worried about uh, the season after that when the regulation changes come in, because that's usually where it goes wrong. Um, I was going to say, yeah, well, I haven't heard many people say they're worried about it. What, what, when you say you're worried, what are you worried about exactly? I'm worried uh, one team uh, will find a loophole and be way ahead of the others again. 
like we've basically seen every time a regulation change comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's going to be interesting. I think that's a good point, to be fair, because it needs a bit of whenever there is a new rule change. Yeah, you're right. There are certain teams who adjust really well and really understand the rules and exploit everything that they can and others that don't as much. And then it kind of takes a couple of years for everyone to kind of get to the same level of understanding. And then it's just the fact that the teams with the most resource tend to do better. But that's yeah. a good point, actually, mate. That is a very good point. Um, well, what about so what was your like standout moment from like last year? Because obviously you've got like Gasly winning, you've got Lewis like just slapping it up like week in, week out, Perez winning. Like what stood out to you, do you think, most? Um a few moments. I would say of course Gasly winning. Um and I would say Lewis winning in Turkey because I think that showed why he's the champion, uh, first of all. It's such an underrated performance, I yeah. think that was. And first of all, because Lewis stayed calm and he qualified mm. like P7, I think so. And also, yeah, right uh, Max actually, I felt like he completely threw away that win because Agreed. he, he was Agreed. P3 at the time. Uh, mm. race was super long of course because it was so slippery quite a lot of laps and then he yeah, threw yeah. it away like 25 laps into the race or something um, so I felt like that was one of the worst moments for Max uh, this year um, yeah for sure and I think it showed why Lewis is the current champion yeah I, I think Max I don't, know, I don't know if you agree but I feel like every year Max has got that little bit more mature and a little bit more intelligent with his decision making but He's still only 23 and yeah, that, that for me, that was, that was like, I definitely think on pace for, for me, he's like up there with Lewis, him, yeah. him and Lewis kind of sit, sit alone, but you wouldn't see Lewis making a decision like that in those circumstances. And I think, yeah, yeah like you say, it was, it was Max just being a bit impatient there, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I think Lewis had the same when he was that age. Um, 100%. Yeah, if you had definitely. like the 20... 11 season where he had quite some crashes and then of yes. course the yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, 2007 race in China where I felt like he threw away quite oh, an important the race yeah. oh, um, which was not completely his fault but still he was the one driving so yeah um, did you have in, in your like when you were racing single seaters did you have a particular like moment that you're like you look back on them was like oh my god that was so stupid like did you have an i am stupid charles leclerc moment <laughs> uh, oh that's a tough one actually um, <laughs> you've probably like hidden it and like i don't want to think about that ever again but I, now i'm bringing it up <laughs> i think there there are a lot of moments where you're like oh, fuck i should have not done that yeah <laughs> um i remember one race in silverstone where uh, there was a problem with the lights uh at the start mm. And I used to be quite aggressive with preloading. I was like, oh, this is taking quite long. And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep preloading. Yeah. Um, and then I completely burned the clutch. Uh, the flywheel turned blue from the from the heat. And um, <laughs> basically my teammate was starting in P32 or something. I was like starting P10. He basically yeah. came to the field and I was my clutch was burned so I was barely moving forward and he hit me with like I think 180 kilometers per hour and both cars oh were completely screwed oh my god mate that sounds terrifying that's yeah. crazy man yeah um well because actually I was gonna like obviously we saw that I, I think it's easy to get um you know especially as, as fans who haven't experienced what you and, and all these drivers experience and actually being behind the wheel and really putting your, you know, putting your life at risk ultimately at the end of the day. After obviously, you know, what happened with Roman last last season, when you were racing, like when you're racing around these tracks, Silverstone, Zanford, wherever, like does that ever cross your mind? Like how, how, how did you as, as a racing driver, like, you must have looked at what happened with Roman through kind of a different perspective than most of us, just normal fans, right? Um, yeah, I think for racing drivers, it's, I wouldn't say normal, but like they know something can happen, especially after Spa in 2019. I felt like a lot of especially yeah. junior category drivers were like, nothing has happened in so many years. Of course, Jules mm. in... Uh, 2014 yeah 14 15 yeah um but 
that was like a freak accident, like one in a million. And I felt like yeah, uh, this was different, of, wasn't it? Yeah, time. I feel like especially junior category drivers, especially since then, were like, okay, this can happen to me as well. Mm. Um, and that was not uh, a freak accident. That's not something uh, the FIA can really do anything about it. As there no. was nothing standing on track that. Uh, happened to like Jules. This was actually just happening. By it was cars. a racing incident that yeah. just ended in the worst case, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think the day after, I remember F3 was racing a spa, and then uh, Simo Laxon had also quite a hard crash in Blanchimo. And you rem- I remember a lot of yeah. F3 drivers panicking straight away on the radio. Whereas if that didn't happen the day before, no mm. one would have worried as much about it as they were like, yeah, yeah, they yeah. would have been like, oh, it would have been all right anyway. So I feel like drivers are like changed a little bit in that perspective. Also, uh, I think that's why everyone got so angry at Mazepin defending from Drugovic in F2 race around mm-hmm. Bahrain because that's just with those cars extremely dangerous because the F2 cars are also reaching like 3 in the 10, 3 in the 20 kilometers per hour and they don't break mm-hmm. as well as an F1 car. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, a lot of drivers and also fans after seeing... Uh, stuff like that happen um, are a bit more uh, aware of what can happen. Yeah, definitely, man. Like when when you were uh, when you first started in karting, like do you remember the first kind of? I, I guess do you remember the first time you were really confronted with like like where you had an accident that actually like hurt? I don't know. Was it like a shunt in karting, and then you were like, oh wow, like this this isn't just a game. This is actually very serious if it does go wrong. Uh yeah, I think quite early on I was like six or seven. Um, I because some of those carting shunts I've seen are nasty, man. You get like, yeah. thrown out the car. It's crazy. Yeah, I think when I was six or seven, I um, I can't remember it completely because I was super young, of course. Uh, mm. I remember I flipped. I fell out luckily, and the cart literally went on like twelve or thirteen times, flipping. Wow. Um, so that was like a little wow. bit of a shock. I wasn't really scared, to be honest, as, um, well, Especially I, your I kids raced, and yeah. quite fearless. Yeah. And then I think two years after that, um, there was a Dutch karting driver, um, mm. who I think was world champion or I can't remember exactly, uh, world champion in case at two, which is like, um, a shift mm-hmm. of cart, but I would say more for not rookies as the level is insane as well. But, um, mm. Not the professionals, let's say, let's keep it that way. And uh, he passed away actually uh, when he wow. crashed, and that was in, I think in two thousand eight or two thousand nine. So I was like yeah. eight, nine years old at the time. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was quite. I mean, I was only eight or nine at the time, but still, realized yeah. like, oh, this can happen. It's crazy, yeah. Because again, we we forget like you look back at like the fifties, sixties, seventies, like people were dying all the time and it's 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 amazing how far it's come on like safety wise but also you know there is only so much like like you said about the Antoine incident like I don't think there's anything that they can do I don't think the FIA implemented anything in terms of fundamental changes to the car that could have you know that could have stopped that but yeah I, I, I guess now you're in F1 esports you don't have to worry too much about that, right? <laughs> no, the world, it, like, no, no. I don't see anything uh, that can do something like that in esports. If no, you're just sitting at home. And, Definitely um, not. But I, I guess it, it's that that is one of the big kind of differences, isn't it? it? Obviously, the G-force is a big element that you don't get in real life sim racing. But also, it's that fear factor that you know most of these guys who've who've never raced on a real track don't have to confront. Whereas you've had to kind of go through that. So I guess. Again, that that mentality. I don't know, even even if it's something you consciously think about or not, but it must make a difference as well. I guess. Um, yeah, but at the same time, like um, when you're racing for so long, I don't think you're really scared anymore mm. of like going through Puon or Radion or Eau Rouge. Mm. Um, you can't afford to be, can you? Really? No, exactly. And I would say you're similarly um, nervous to spin in an F1 esports qualifying as. Mm. Uh, a real F1 qualifying because yeah, yeah. you, I would say the fear of messing up a qualifying or a lap is bigger than the fear of crashing for yeah. most drivers. So yeah, I it, can imagine. Yeah, definitely. In that sense, it's uh, similar. I've got a few more. These I've got some like 
uh, just random questions here. This is my like quick fire round. I thought it'd be fun to learn a bit more about the Yarno behind the Opmir. Uh, <laughs> so first question, Yarno, what is your favorite snack? Oi. Um, good question. Mm. Bit of a change up here. It could be some Dutch snack that I've never heard of, probably. <laughs> uh, I, I must say, I don't think it's really a snack. It's more like just what I take every day. Which is like uh, every day I eat um, my eggs, three eggs, baked with uh, ham, cheese, and sometimes I put salmon on as well with uh, toasted bread. That's okay. something I eat literally every day. Literally. Actually, I I have egg, I have poached egg, toast, and avocado most days. Yeah, that's my kind of like equivalent to that. Nice, yeah, yeah. very nice. You got you got good taste, mate. What is um, <laughs> like I, I've I've been to uh, typically I've only ever been to Amsterdam. I've I've I'm not I'm I've never been to Rotterdam. I'm not as uh, I, I'm I'm not that cultured. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but I. I What's the kind of um, have you have you done much like traveling as well? Because the next question is like, what's your like favorite? What's your dream like holiday destination? Uh, uh, have, you, have you been around the world much? Oh, I, of course you've been around the world much. You're yeah. a fucking racing driver, <laughs> uh, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been around the world a lot. Um, at the start of 2020, I went to China. Um, probably got the coronavirus. Um, <laughs> not sure. Yeah, that, that's like I'm not even joking. Like, uh, oh dear. I went at the first week of January. Uh, hmm. I don't remember exactly when. Um, oh, man. Now, remember, I thought I got uh, a, a lung infection. Really? Uh, and at the time, there were wow. like 40 or 50 um, confirmed corona cases in China. So, was like, yeah. there's no way I got it. But thinking back, it I was with... a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> thinking back, I was like with a lot of people from mm -hmm. all around China. Yeah. And yeah. they all traveled to one place. So sure, I'm, I'm quite oh, sure surely. I got it at the time um, and took it with me back to Holland, probably. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, but yeah, Shanghai was a really fun experience, to be honest, uh, apart from That's getting cool. sick for like one, one and a half days. Yeah, don't worry about the virus. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've, the year before, I went to Kuala Lumpur, which is really cool. Kuala Lumpur. Nice. And, uh, Bangkok, which was around Buriram, the quite new circuit, uh -huh. I think so. MotoGP drive there as well. Um, oh. So yeah, Kuala Lumpur was probably one of the best places I've been ever. Um, that was really cool. I also went in the Petronas Towers. Uh, nice. I never, I didn't of went course. up top, but um, I did went in the in the Shanghai Tower. Uh, I don't yeah. know what it's called. Maybe it's Shanghai Tower. I'm not sure actually. Uh, oh yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think it's like sec you... second tallest in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what do you like with heights? Um, I'm not like I'm not gonna say I'm not scared of it, but at the same time, I really enjoy like being on such a tall. I, I like the adrenaline, like you know. Oh, like I would like. Well, I'm scared of like bungee jumping, but at the same time, I would really like the adrenaline, so I really <laughs> want to do it as well. So yeah, you're a braver man than me, mate. No, <laughs> I'm terrible with heights, man. Fuck that. <laughs> Um, okay, so what about what was your favorite? What's your favorite racing circuit to drive uh, in the world? Uh, I think Zandvoort and Barcelona um, driving oh, cool. wise. Nice. Um, but to watch to watch a Formula One race, uh, mm -hmm. probably Baku is really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I absolutely hate driving on it, but I race <laughs> like watching a race is quite quite cool, of course. Um, nice. But of the current F1 calendar, probably Zandvoort and Barcelona. Uh, but I think like. Mugello and Imola are really cool as well. Mm. Um, and is that is that racing actually? Yeah, because obviously you've you've got the you've got the the knowledge of having raced a lot of these tracks both in real life and virtually. So, do you have like is your favorite in real life different to your favorite on the game? If you know what I mean. Um. Yeah. 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 Of course. Um. Because you might like some layouts, but like driving up a route or going through a pool is really cool. Of course. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, I would say that's slightly different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Is it like just because it's not like five G at your neck? How? How is actually? That's another question. 
have you got like obviously we we I've seen you you know you're a gym lad for sure but like the thick neck is that something that like even in formula 4 you kind of did you struggle with that at all the whole like g force pulling at your neck mm, no i don't think i ever struggled really physically in in single seaters at all because i was always training really well the only thing i struggled with was, was weight because if you're 185 186 uh, mm. Or in English terms, six foot one, or I'm not exactly. Mm-hmm. I think it's six foot one. Um, oh, we're like the same height. Yeah. That's funny. Um, yeah. Then trying to be like without helmet, 66, 67 kilo, which yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much not doable. So oh, God, no. they did went up on it. Luckily in real F1. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm cool. not sure if they put it in all the junior categories yet. Uh, yeah. That rule. But it's a bit inhuman to be like 185, 186, and then to be 66, yeah. 67 kilo. That's crazy. Um, I, I mean, I'm a long way off that. I'm much heavier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm now as well. I'm like uh, just over 80 kilos now. So I, I, don't, yeah. I don't have to care about it anymore. You don't have to worry about that now. So that's not, not a good thing about F1 esports, you know? Yeah, exactly. You can just eat all the burgers you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not best for you, but you know, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, all right, Jano, next question. What is your favorite drink and by drink i mean like drink like an alcoholic drink alcoholic drink. yeah uh, if you're going to a bar or a pub in the when when, when they're back open what would what, what, what would you go for i drink quite a lot of desperados if i Ooh. have a drink um nice do you put the lemon in the top no i'm too lazy lime. to like buy a lemon <laughs> and stuff uh yeah uh so desperados i'm open for like a lot of things so mm. Good lads, good lad. I, I, I've got to be honest. I, I don't like beer, but my my, my <laughs> flatmate used to drink Desperados like it was tap water. It was ridiculous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it smells nice, but I just I don't like the taste. Mm. Um, okay, Yano, next question, and we're sticking to food. I like to I like to stick to food questions in it because I feel like it. You know, you get to know someone a bit more when you talk about food. Um, you're on death row. Okay, you've 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 cause disgrace to the f1 esports world <laughs> and you're on death row what is your final meal on death row what's your last ever meal you get to eat so basically what's your favorite meal it's just a more dramatic way of framing the question <laughs> um... just got one meal last ever thing is it a big steak is it spaghetti i what think i will go with my eggs and salmon and ham and cheese Ah, of course. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Do you typically have that? Is that like a lunch or breakfast or dinner? Or yeah, that's any? that's my lunch basically. Yeah. Okay, that would be your final meal. You yeah. go out with familiar. I like it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next question: Who is your favorite band slash musician of all time? Oh, that's a good question. If you had to pick one, oh. what are you thinking? Tricky one, I know. Tricky yeah. one. Yeah. I think it's like I don't really follow one band or singer. I just like whenever I listen to a song and I like it, I put it in my list and then listen to my list. And then sometimes I listen to like random music. I'm like, oh, I like that one. I put it in my list. Yeah. Do you have a particular like type of music that you're into? Like indie or rock or rap or R&B uh, or whatever? It's quite mixed, I would say. I would say it's like um, I listen to like Tiger. I don't know if you know the rapper mm-hmm. Tiger. I listen to yeah, him yeah. sometimes, but then randomly I might also listen to like Billie Eilish. Uh, nice. So I'm like completely, uh, yeah, I'm not really into one type of music, but it's something I would definitely not listen. It's like rock or something. Bit of yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Okay. What about favorite? F- favorite? I can't speak. Favorite. TV show slash slash like movie series that kind of thing. Uh, lately, I've been watching Scorpion on, on Netflix. Uh, mm. Quite enjoy that. Is it one, is it good? Would you recommend it? Um, yeah, I, I think it's really good. It's like um, a bunch of I think they call it. Uh, they would just say bunch of nerds uh, with a really high <laughs> IQ. Basically, start working for the government and uh, fix problems, uh, fix crimes, mm. and hack into people their stuff sounds cool yeah that's cool what about like what about like growing up is there any particular tv show or movie that you that sticks in your mind as being really like yeah nostalgic uh pokemon probably oh uh, good lad good lad 
Finney's and Ferb, second Cody, like the usual <laughs> on there. Um, yeah, I would say Pokemon probably because I, I also used to play that on the, on the Game Boy a lot, like of way too much. Oh mate, yeah, same. What was your favorite? What's your favorite Pokemon game? Do you reckon? Uh, Fire Red, I think so. Nice, nice. Yeah. The re- they, were, they were good. The redos, they were really good. It's a shame they Pokemon. don't. Uh, they don't make like a Pokemon game like that on on your phone. Yeah, you're right. They're still because they're still stuck on the actual. You you can get an emulator for your phone. I, I've yeah, got one I know that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. but still, it would be much better if you can just download. Uh, from the Google Play Store, and I think they would earn mm. like crazy money from it because everyone is really nostalgic from it. It's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Yeah, because you have to download an emulator and then you have to find a ROM, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, all com- it's, it's more complicated than it needs. That's a good point, actually. If if they just made it easy, even if you got to pay for it on Google Play Store, they could make a lot of money. Very yeah. good point. Um, all right. Next question, Yana. What is your favorite sport outside of Formula One? Um, football probably. Do you still follow Feyenoord like quite closely? Or? Nah, I don't watch it. Sometimes I watch like the results. Um, mm-hmm. I also follow Real Madrid a little bit because of uh, Thibaut. Who, uh, ah, okay, nice. Still ask me some questions sometimes about like sim racing or like setups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's great. That's that's my. Didn't he, he got fastest lap? Didn't he in the? Uh, yeah, he did. Virtual... He did. Yeah. He's pretty rapid, isn't he? Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's you, got some you, ability there. You need to watch out. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that's it. He's obviously very good with his hands. Yeah. Um, sounds a bit weird, but go on. I'll carry on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yano. What is your favorite, or sorry, what's your dream road car? So if if you could own any car right now, one, and maybe like I'll break it down into two. So there's one like realistic one. So one you've got to live with every day and then one just absolute dream, dream, dream car. Wow. That's a good question. Mm. Uh, That's what I do, mate. That's what I do. Good question. <laughs> one, okay. I have to go with Mercedes now, don't I? You kind of do. <laughs> you kind of do. <laughs> um, one not non okay. Obviously, Mercedes is first in both of these. But what about non Mercedes? Non Mercedes. You're like, what is that? That that doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, I think like a Lamborghini. Was, I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Like Lamborghini Aventador, maybe. Um, not bad. Not bad. Pretty nice. Subtle, subtle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think it will go for it, like something like Lamborghini. I Would that so. be the one you'd live with every day, though? Imagine like it's it's on your so you've got to drive to the shops with it. You've got to <laughs> pick up your your, your your parents with it. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't fit, it. they can just go or go on the <laughs> on the on the spoiler, you know. <laughs> no, I like that. Um, That's a proper racing driver's mentality. I like that. <laughs> what what is it called? The the more SUV kind of Lamborghini. Oh, the Urus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's nice actually. I quite like that. That's a good shout. Okay, so it's just a Lamborghini garage after Mercedes, of course. Yeah. Um, cool. I like that. Um, <laughs> all right, Yano. Uh, and what is your favorite Formula One car of all time? Uh, oh, good question. The classic. The classic. What's the one that sticks into your mind first of all? I would say the turbo car from like McLaren in 1988, which is like crazy amount of horsepower, Mm -hmm. which is like super hard to drive. I think that one. It's the one where Senna said um, this insane quali lap around Monaco. I think it's 1988, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure that's spot on, yeah. Yeah, crazy, crazy. But I love the style of those cars back then because they were just so simple, just massive tires, super simple wings. Like yeah. you might get, hopefully, maybe one day you might get a chance to drive a car like that. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be insane. Have you ever, have you ever driven a really old like racing car before um, mm, in real life? I don't think so. No. Only modern a- stuff. Well... Keep grinding that YouTube, mate, and keep getting the titles, <laughs> and I'm sure <laughs> you'll be invited in yeah. one day, no doubt, especially as you're a racing driver, an actual racing driver, not just someone faking it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. 
And then last question of this little section is what was your favorite livery of last season? So what was your favorite car of the 2020 cars looks wise? You can't say the Mercedes. <laughs> to be the... fair, a lot of people say the Mercedes anyway, because it was really nice in all the Yeah, but I think non Mercedes. The... Uh from last year. I think Alpha Tauri. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Why does everyone say love this delivery so much? It, oh, okay. I really like the <laughs> delivery used by Mercedes in 2019 for the Hockenheim one. Oh my god, the, that was cool. But the 2019 Mercedes livery, just the general livery, it was so nice, so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. That 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 was cool as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, the result didn't really play out for them. But um, yeah, that's now they're probably never going to use it anymore. Because no, <laughs> definitely <result>. not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely so, not. That's man. a shame. All right, Yana. Well, final question, mate. I won't take up too much more of your time, but thank you again for taking the time, mate. I really do appreciate it. No I enjoyed worry. this. It's been a good chat. Yeah. Um, and the final question I put at the end of all of these now is: is two words. Why are you? Because loads of people, especially in terms of your success with esports particularly so many people try so many people pick up these games and play them and you've been able to position yourself as arguably the best in the world at the moment why why are you above anyone else what is it taken what have what do you think anyone watching who maybe has similar ambitions can learn from what you've done and what are your biggest kind of pieces of advice you would give to people who are trying to achieve what you've achieved um Oh, well, of course, first of all, practice. I mean, I've been doing this for almost 17, no, 16 years now. Uh, yeah, 16 years. And you're years. only 20 as well. So it's like, it's like four fifths of your life you've been yeah, racing. Yeah, I've basically been doing this uh, every weekend for like 16 years. Uh, <laughs> I mean, now it's every day. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I've get, I get a lot of questions like, how do I get better? And then... They say, like, I've been driving for two months. I'm like, yeah, no shit, you're not good yet. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing this for two months. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'd say, first of all, a lot of practice. Uh, you need to have the right people around you. So put yourself uh, around the people that uh, want to reach the same goals as you. Push really hard. Be nice to people. Uh, even in Very important. Very important. Even in times um, it doesn't go your way. <laughs> um, and, yeah. Um, as I said before practice push hard that's it practice mate's perfect mate yep. cool man well thank you again mate we are done okay um, did you enjoy that yeah was definitely good? yeah it was fun mm-hmm. how long have we been doing this uh, hour 20 minutes ah that felt like 15 minutes <laughs> flies by you know yeah. that has been good good yeah. that's, that's always a good sign when it feels quicker yeah, um, yeah, yeah definitely yeah man like thank you again for taking the time and obviously massive congratulations to all your successes recently and including with the youtube channel as well again i will link yano's youtube channel in the top link of the description and i'll put a card at the start of the video so be sure to check his stuff out if you want to learn from the very best um so yeah man thanks again and and we're done goodbye everyone thank you for watching thank you (laughs) waving to the camera goodbye (laughs) all right sweet mate it's done